Okay, quickly, just before this video starts, I just wanted to say this video took so much work, almost two full weeks of work to get all the clips, script the entire video, but this video is a little bit different than all my other videos. It's scripted, so comment down below if you like this sort of like review guide sort of video. Comment down below what type of videos you want to see more of, and please enjoy the ultimate Rogue Company guide. Hello guys, it's me, Hayden Lettuce, and I'm back with the most up-to-date 2021 Ultimate Rogue Company Guide. I've been playing this game a lot lately, <laughs> like probably too much lately, and now I'm here after too much playtime to give you all the tips, all the tricks, to take you from noob to pro in just one video. In today's video, we will be going over four topics, game modes, rogues, settings, and overall tips. I'll be leaving timestamps in the description in case you want to skip to a certain topic. But I do recommend you watch through the whole video even if you're good at the game, because there are going to be at least a couple of things that you can learn from in this video. Make sure to like and subscribe, and without further ado, let's jump into the ultimate Rogue Company guide. For game modes, I'm going to start by explaining the least competitive game mode, Strikeout, all the way up to the most competitive game mode, Demolition. First, let's talk about Strikeout. Strikeout happens to be what you're watching on the screen right now. This is the least competitive game mode and is most similar to a basic team deathmatch, which is a common staple for most shooter video games. Each team has 12 tickets, also known more commonly as respawns. Whenever anyone on your team dies, they use a respawn. Each team keeps fighting until one team runs out of respawns and then kills them one more time to get them out for that round. There is also one other way to take tickets from the other team. There is a random point or area on the map, as you can see here. And if your team holds that point for 30 seconds, you burn a respawn, also known as a ticket, from the other team without even having to kill an enemy team player. This game is played first to three rounds, and is super fun for just jumping in and trying to get as many kills as possible. Here's a quick clip of me popping off in Strikeout. The next game mode we'll be talking about is Extraction. Extraction is a mix of the competitive and non-competitive game modes. Just a quick warning, in Extraction you only have one life, so when you die, you are out until the next round. You can win by wiping out the entire other team, or either team has a minute 30 seconds to arm the bomb. In this game mode, it's actually a cube, but same difference. If there are still rogues alive on each team after the minute 30 seconds is up and no one has armed the cube, then it's a draw. Once one team has armed the cube, the other team only has a minute 30 seconds to either kill everyone or defuse the cube. This is a clip of me, my brother, my friend Matthew, and a random in a first to five round of extraction. The last game mode we'll be talking about is Demolition. Demolition is the premier competitive game mode of Rogue Company. In this game mode, you take turns attacking and defending, and there's a couple ways for you to win on both sides. When you're attacking, you can win by two ways. One is by wiping out the entire enemy team, and two is by planting the bomb and giving it enough time to explode in either points A or B. When you're defending, there's three ways to win. One is by not letting them plant the bomb in the first a minute 30 seconds of the game, killing the entire other team before they plant the bomb, 
Or lastly, if they do get to plant the bomb, you have to defuse it. Like I said, this game mode is the premier competitive game mode, and now there's even a ranked demolition game mode, where you can rank up in tiers and try to get to the top. I'll let you know about all the different game modes that you'll be happy into. You're gonna need to know about all the different rogues. In this game, each different rogue, like in Rainbow Six Siege, has different abilities, gadgets, perks, and weapons. They can be extremely varying play styles and super fun to try them all. But when you start this game, you're only going to have six rogues. Out of these six that you start with, I'm going to recommend the two best ones to use. So let's roll through the six. First, there's Anvil, Dallas, Dima, Ronin, Saint, and lastly, Trench. Each different rogue has special abilities, gadgets, and perks, just like I said. I'm going to recommend the two best ones for you to start with. First, you gotta start with Ronin. Ronin is a base rogue on most competitive teams and is super good all around mid range, close range, and even long range. She has an SMG that is pretty good, but she also has one of the best guns in the game, the KA 30. The KA-30 is crazy because it's super good from close range, and you can even use it from long range. If you play smart and play well with her playstyle, this rogue is almost unstoppable. She has a ballistic knife that is super good because it can be used as a trip mine and block off sights if you throw it on the ground, because whenever someone walks by it, it blows up and deals 100 damage. You can also throw it at someone, and if it hits someone directly, it does 125 damage. The last two things to mention are her passive, which is underground. This ability is super good because it's passive, which means it's in the background, and it keeps you underground, which is off radar from rogues like Dallas who can reveal. The last thing to mention about Ronin is her perks. Each rogue has six different perks, which are different abilities you can buy and use in the background. Most of her abilities are pretty good, but there are definitely some that stand out, including tenacity. This makes it so when you get hit with a grenade, you only take 60 damage instead of 100. You also have nimble hands, which increases weapon swap reload speed, but definitely isn't a highlight. The last two are very good though. She has replenish, which makes it so whenever you down an enemy, your currently equipped weapon immediately restores ammunition. So it's kind of like Lancer's roll to reload, if you know what I'm talking about. Lastly is tracker rounds, which is super good because whenever you tag someone for a short duration, you can see them through walls or even through smoke. If you use tracker rounds in combination with her smoke grenades, it can be almost overpowered. The next person I'm going to recommend to you is Anvil. Anvil is absolutely insane. His main ability isn't that good. He places a wall, it is destructible, but it does have a lot of health. But what really makes him stand out are his gadgets and his guns. He has two of the best guns in the game. The shotguns in this game don't stand out too much, but if you do like shotguns, this is definitely the best one. It can even one shot to the body if you're right in their face. But the gun that stands out even more is his maw. This is the only LMG in the game and is absolutely overpowered. He also has immunity, which makes it so that he can't be affected by blind effects, but that doesn't come into play that much. That's only for stopping him from the ability of flash grenades. Now let's talk about his combat loadout. To start it off, his gadgets are absolutely insane. C4 is arguably the best gadget in the game. You can toss it around corners. Yes, it doesn't have that much range, but that thing, you can explode and kill multiple people whenever you decide. The next is the active protection system, which actually isn't that good. It just makes it so you can place it down, and whenever a grenade comes in, it sucks it up, but it's only in a certain range. He also has tenacity, which I explained on Ronin, but his two 10,000 abilities, which are both super good, is headstrong, where he gains an additional 25 armor, and the last one, being even more overpowered, is downing an enemy heals a significant amount over a short duration, which is called life drain. It's super good because when you kill someone, you immediately have health to go for, take the next fight. Now that you've gone over game modes and rogues, it's time to do the last little thing before you can jump into your first match and absolutely destroy a rogue company. We want to take a quick look at settings. In this video, I'm not going to be going over in-depth keyboard and mouse settings because I don't 
specifically play on keyboard and mouse. I played a couple games here and there, and I do have some good settings, so comment down below if you want to see a more in-depth video about different settings, or if you want to see more in-depth guides about each different rogue. But besides the point, let's get into my controller settings. In this game, you really don't want to change too much. All of this, if you just want to look through it once and set it how I have it. Uh, once again, I don't really use my mouse, so I wouldn't look at that. But honestly, just keep most of the thing the same. There's a couple things that I have changed, like controller sensitivity and a couple of these ADS sensitivity, but most of the stuff in this game, you really want to keep the same and be consistent because the more consistent, the more practice you get in this game, the better and better you're going to get. I'm just going through these a couple times if you want to just copy these settings over to your settings on Rogue Company. These are really the best you can get. And I will recommend one thing on bindings. You do not want to change a single thing. This game does a really good job of automatically binding all the binds correctly. The only thing that I would recommend you change is this. So in this game, melees are actually very good. And it's kind of hard to get to the right D-pad to use your melee. So I recommend you put it to your top d-pad if that's a little bit easier for you to get to it's made mostly just preference but it is very nice to have there for me so i do recommend you do that and just one quick note when you do change that you're going to want to make sure to change your open shop to the side button because you're going to need to open the shop in the game well now we went over the settings and let's just get some last overall tips and let's roll some gameplay Now onto the final part of the video. This is gonna be short and sweet. I'm gonna give you two tips. One, pick up weapons off of dead bodies on the ground. As you see in this clip, me and my cousin and some randoms are in a fight and I see some good guns on the ground, so I actually pick them up, knowing, because in this game, you basically never want to have your secondary weapon. You always want to pick up some other rogue's primary. So for example, I still have, I picked up this LMG, which is the Maw off of Anvil, as I was talking about. This is one of the best guns in the game. And I picked up the Saints scoped assault rifle so that I can beam with that long range. And then also if I get in any close range fights, I can, you know, use my ability and just beam kids with the LMG. So. This is a super important thing in this game, pick up weapons off of dead bodies. Um, but an the other important thing, the last important thing in this video that I want to go over is flanking. In this game, flanking is so, so important. It's absolutely a huge part of this game. And if you can get around the enemy team, and it's maybe a 4v4, you can make that 4v4 turn into a, a 4v2 very, very quick if you flank properly. The last tip I want to give you is communication. Communication is huge in this game. If you're ever trying to get some good wins, you probably are going to want to communicate. I mean, you can go into randoms and still use the communication on Rogue Company, which is what I do with my cousin, so that we can talk to the other people we're playing with. But it is just so nice. Like, make a Discord. Just talk on Rogue Company. Communication is key in this game. And if you want to get some dubs, just use all these tips that I gave you today, and you'll be on your way to being a pro at this game. Um... Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe. This video took a whole lot of work, but it's been fun to make. Comment down below if you want more Rogue Company content, and we will see you guys next time. Peace out. By the way, that's gonna be the outro to the YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot we're recording. <laughs>